All right, I would like to talk about small beam theorem, a very, very useful theorem to assess stability of a closed loop system. And you can apply this to linear systems and to nonlinear systems. And I would like to give um, the statement of this theorem and then I will, con I will focus on a couple of applications. All right, for, first of all, with regard to small gain theorem, consider this feedback interconnection. You have two systems, S1 and S2, and I would like to assume that S1 and S2 are two stable systems, first of all. Then basically, if norm of S1 and norm of S2 are strictly less than one, then we say that closed loop system is stable. And if you think about transfer functions, these norms for S1 and S2 are typically H-infinity norms. So, for example, what is an H-infinity norm? Basically, H-infinity norm, if you plot the body plot for S1 and S2, this is the magnitude plot. Um, basically, H-infinity norm is the maximum peak in the body magnitude plot. And it can be, of course, less than or more than zero decibels. So in this, if you have a SI, a system, one of these systems like this, then the maximum peak is the H infinity norm. And in general, any in this norm will lead to the same result, okay? So once again, you have this uh, feedback interconnection. Once you have this, closed up system is stable. And I would like, before I proceed further, I would like to mention that this is a sufficient condition. So, uh, in other words, uh, the end result can be conservative, okay? Conservative. So, it comes with some conservatism. All right. So, first, let's look at um, two transfer functions. This is the first example. Then I will do the second example. In the First example, I consider this first transfer function S1 and S2. Basically, when I uh, plot the body plot of this S1, it is H infinity norm is 3.89. And if you plot the body plot for this, it's H infinity norm is 1. And then basically, small gain theorem, basically this multiplied by this is not less than 1. So um, the close-up system, I, you know, can be unstable since this is a sufficient condition, okay? So you can verify this by finding the close-up system transfer function and how I, how I obtain this closed-up transfer function. Basically, if you write the, basically, let's say this being the input and uh, this being the input, this being the output, ignore these signals here then this can be represented as this block diagram S1 divided by 1 plus S1, S2. This is the closed loop systems transfer function. All right, so if you set its denominator to zero to find closed loop poles, you will have some negative, basically some poles with negative uh, real parts, but one or two of them basically are on the right half plane and hence the close-up system is unstable, consistent with the small gain theorem since this product is not less than one. Let's consider the second example where we have the same S1, but this uh, a slightly different S2. In this case, H infinity norm of S1 is 3.89 again, since we consider the same S1. But second transfer functions, H infinity norm is 0.25. So you know, basically S1 multiplied by S2 will be less than one. Since this is a sufficient condition, we know indeed that the interconnection of S1 and S2 are stable. Basically, you can also verify this from the same closed loop system transfer function, find the, its denominator. You are going to see that every pole will be located on the left half plane and hence it is stable or by the direct by the small gain theorem if you multiply these two it will be less than one so we have closed loop stability um you can i mentioned at the beginning of this video you can also use for nonlinear systems to assess their stability now i'm considering this um, basically nonlinear uh, system x1 dot equals to x2 x2 dot equals to some minus a1 a minus a x1 minus b x1 and minus c x1 uh, sine of x1 x1 all right i would like to write this 
in the in in this interconnection form to apply small gain theorem. Uh, to do this, basically you can combine these equations like this. You have this matrix here coming from this part of the equation, and then you have some input phi, and phi is basically this part. And since this is driven by x1, I am choosing my output to be just x1, right? So basically, this system, this block diagram that you see, is equivalent to this uh, nonlinear uh, equations. You have the linear part here. I inject the nonlinear part here. Now, basically, after you put this system into this form on the right, let's look at the uh, magnitude of this phi term here. Basically, it has absolute value of C sine x1, x1. C, let's assume it to be a cons positive constant, leave it outside. Then sine of x1, x1, we know that sine of x1 is upper bounded by 1. So this is upper bounded by C multiplied by x1, and x1 is nothing but y. So C multiplied by absolute value of y. So basically, if h infinite norm of this g, what is g is basically, it is in time domain, but you can also represent this transfer, this state space representation into the, in the uh, transfer function as this. You know, for this, you can watch uh, the video on my channel, Laplace domain versus um, time domain, um, basically a video. All right, so this state space representations transfer function can be given by this. So by the small gain theorem, if the h-infinite norm of this transfer function is strictly less than 1 over c, then the closed-loop system is stable. Why? Because this is upper bounded by c. So this transfer function's h-infinite norm needs to be less than 1 over c, such that if you multiply 1 over c and c, it will be strictly less than 1, right? c multiplied by uh, c multiplied by anything less than 1 over c in other words i am doing this it needs to be less than 1 so we know this is c and this since this needs to be less than uh, this since this needs to be less than 1 over c then the closed up system needs to be stable more precisely let me rewrite here um, phi needs to be less than 1. This is C, and this needs to be less than 1 over C. Okay, so then the product will be less than 1. All right, so another application is um, to assess some uncertainties, right? So, for example, let's say you are looking at this x that equals to a plus delta a x. Delta a is unknown here, and a is known. Um, basically, we can write this, I would like to apply a small gain theorem to find a sufficient condition on the, you know, basically stability. Basically, I am rearranging this equation as Ax plus delta Ax. Delta A is an n by n matrix. This is n by n matrix, known. This is unknown. Now, in order to write this in um, um, interconnection form, I am rewriting this system as x that equals to ax plus u, y equals to x, and here u is delta ax. Basically, if we apply this to here, you are going to obtain this system or this system. But putting this into this form will allow us to represent this uncertain system into this block diagram. And at the top level, we have x that equals to ax plus u, y equals to x, and the bottom minus a x. I put a minus here since we also have minus here. Now, assume that the perturbations inside the delta a is upper bounded by gamma. Then by small gain theorem, we can say that closed-up system is stable if the basically h-infinite norm of this as a transfer function or um, transfer state space representations transfer function is less than 1 over gamma. So since here B is identity, C is identity, we can re represent this as SI minus A inverse. 
Um, let's consider two examples. In the first example, a is 0, 1, minus 1, minus 2, and delta a is 0, 0, 1, 0. Basically, it is basically in this case, it's a trivial example. I'm just providing this for your eyes to visualize it, right? Basically, if you sum a and delta a, this term basically will cancel out with this term, so you will have a uh, eigenvalue on the imaginary axis, so the closed-up system will not be stable. So in this case, if you find um, a norm of delta A, you are going to get one. If you find H infinity norm of G of S, this part, it will be one. One multiplied by one is not strictly less than one, so by small gain theorem, we cannot say it is stable. So it is not stable. But on the other hand, if you have delta A to be 0.5 here, then basically, you know, you can also visualize, right? A plus delta A will have eigenvalues on the left half plane. So um, basically, in this case, if you calculate norm of delta A, you are going to get 0.5. H infinity norm is 1. 0.5 multiplied by 1 is less than 1. So by small gain theorem, sufficient condition says that this uh, with this uncertainty um, basically you have the closed up system is stable and of course in real world you don't know precisely these uncertainties i just assumed that you know we know like this uh, for you to visualize in general delta a can be you know some uh, delta 1, delta 2, delta 3, delta 4, and we know for each delta some minimum and maximum uh, variations. So if you take the norm of this, it needs to be less than um, um, basically if delta A is say gamma, right, then g of uh, g is infinity, uh, the norm of this system needs to be strictly less than gamma for stability, for closed loop systems stability. So for all perturbations, you need to have this, you know, you, for all perturbations, you need to find this gamma and then ensure that this multiplied by this strictly less than one. I hope um, this helps, you know, um, in my research over the past several years, many years, I found uh, um, small uh, gain theorem useful for some, to, some time to time. Again, I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it provides you a sufficient condition. So it comes with some conservatism. So you may find by using other tools, especially if you are dealing with linear systems, you know, uh, matrix mathematics type of approaches, uh, you can end up having less conservative result. But at the end of the day, it is a neat result. It is good to know. So I tried to cover it in this video. So leave a comment if you like it, or if you have questions, let me know and we can go from there. Take care.